Hello, welcome to Smart Sessions by Smart Interviews. In this video, we are going to solve a problem called finding the minimum and maximum number of nodes between critical points from lead code. You can find the problem link in the description below. I highly recommend that you pause the video over here, open the problem statement, understand it thoroughly and try to come up with a solution on your own. Okay, let's get started. So the problem says that you have to return an array of length 2 containing minimum distance and maximum distance where minimum distance is the minimum distance between any two distinct critical points and maximum distance is the maximum distance between any two distinct critical points. If there are fewer than two critical points, we should return the answer as minus 1 and minus 1. Let's try to see what is a critical point. A critical point in a linked list is defined as either a local maxima or a local minima. A node is a local maxima if the current node has a value strictly greater than the previous node and the next node. Similarly, a node is a local minima if the current node has a value strictly smaller than the previous node and the next node. If you look at the first example, there are only two nodes in the linked list, 3 and 1. There are no critical points. Hence, the answer is minus 1 and minus 1. If you look at the second example, in the second example, there are three critical points. The first critical point is 1. It is a local minima because the adjacent nodes 3 and 2 are strictly greater than 1. The second critical point is 5. Again, it's a local maxima because it's greater than both the adjacent nodes. And the third critical point is again 1. It's a local minima as it's smaller than both the adjacent nodes. So if you look at the three nodes, 1, 5 and 1, the minimum distance is between 5 and 1, which is 1. And the maximum distance is between 1 and 1, which is 3. Hence, the answer is 1 and 3. Let's try to understand the problem statement better. So if you look at this example, in the given linked list, the node 13 is a critical point, it's a local maxima. The node 4 is a critical point, it's a local minima. And similarly, the node 15 and the node 1 are also critical points. For the answer, you'll get the minimum distance between these two critical points, which is 1. And the maximum distance will be obviously between the first critical point and the last critical point. So from this you understand that you definitely need the first and the last critical point because that's what will give you the maximum distance. For the minimum distance, it will be always between two adjacent critical points. So it will be either between first and second critical point or second and third critical point or third and fourth critical point. For this example, it is between the third and the fourth critical point. So if you try to build a logic, you understand that you need to somehow figure out all the critical points. To check if a node is a critical point or not, it's very easy. You have to simply compare it with the previous node and the next node. That means in the process, when you are at the current node, you should have the value of the previous node as well as the value of the next node. Only when you have these two values, only then you will be able to check if the node is a critical point or not. And of course, the first node and the last node cannot be critical points because they don't have the required values. So we can skip the first node and we can start checking from the second node. Say the head of the link list is here. We'll check whether it's a critical point or not. It is not because it is neither bigger than both the adjacent neighbors nor smaller than both the adjacent neighbors. So it's not a critical point. We move to the next node. The moment we reach here, we have to somehow understand that this is the first critical point we are getting. What we can do is we can use a variable p1 and initialize it to 
minus 1. The moment we reach here and we see that it's a critical point, since P1 is minus 1, we know that it's the first critical point. So we update P1 to the position of the current node. So while iterating on the linked list, we are also maintaining a position. Say the position is 0 here, 1 here, 2 here and so on. So the moment you encounter 13, you will update the value of P1 to the current position which is 2 and then you continue, you reach this, it is not a critical point, you reach this, it is a critical point. Since we know that the maximum distance will come between the first and the last critical point, we can use another variable say P2 for storing the last critical point. So let us say we have another variable P2 again initialized to minus 1. The moment you come here, you can update P2 to the current position which is 4 and so on. You continue iterating. This is not a critical point. This is a critical point. The moment you get this, you update P2 to 6. Similarly, when you reach here, you update P2 to 7 and so on. You reach the end of the linked list and you stop. So in this process, we are able to find P1 and P2, which will help us find the maximum distance. But what about the minimum distance? As discussed previously, the minimum distance will be between two adjacent critical points only. So in this process, the moment we are finding one of the critical points, we should also have the position of the previous critical point. So when you reached here, you can say that the previous critical points position is 2. The moment you reach here, you know the current position of the critical point. You also know the previous position of the critical point. You can simply find the difference that is current position minus previous position. It will give you the difference between the two adjacent critical points which comes out to be 2 and before you start moving forward, you will update your previous position to the current position which is 4. Again when you reach here, your current position becomes 6, previous position was 4, you find the difference, it comes out to be 2. So minimum distance remains 2. Before you move forward, you update previous critical points position to the current position which is 6. Now when you reach this node, that is the node at position 7, your position is 7, previous is 6, you will get the distance as 1. So you update your minimum distance to 1. So in this way, in a single iteration of the linked list, with the help of multiple variables like P1, P2, previous position, current position, you will be able to find the maximum distance and the minimum distance. The maximum distance will be always between the first critical point and the last critical point which is P2 minus P1 and for the minimum distance, every time you find a critical point, you take the difference of the current position and the previous position and you keep updating your minimum distance. Also, the problem mentioned that if you find fewer than two critical points, you should return minus one and minus one as the answer. So if you observe over here, we have initialized P1 to minus one. So if P1 remains minus one, it means you did not find any critical point. Similarly, if P1 and P2 are same, that means you found only one critical point. So in both of these conditions, you can return the answer as minus 1 and minus 1 itself. I hope you understood this logic. Again, I recommend you to pause the video over here, go through the logic again and see if you can convert the logic to proper code in your language of choice. Let's see how the code will look like. We'll write the code in C++. 
the given function is nodes between critical points you are given the head of the linked list so as we saw we will need multiple variables we will need p1 say initialize to minus 1 we will also need p2 we initialize p2 also to minus 1 at the same time we will also need the current position starting with 0 we will also need previous position say we initialize that to minus 1 you will see that it will not really matter because we will use previous position only when we have found at least two critical points also we discussed that the head node cannot be a critical point so let us move head forward so head equal to head of next to check if the current node can be a critical point or not we need the previous node value as well as the next node value if we have moved head forward we cannot access the previous node value so before doing that let us store the previous value in a variable say previous value initialize to head of value now let us start iterating on the linked list while head not equal to null if you look at this this is going till the last node but if you remember even the last node cannot be a critical point so we should not go till the last node our condition should be while head of next not equal to null the first thing that we will do is check if the current node is a critical node or not let us move that logic to a separate function let us try to write modular code so if is critical of we will need the previous value we will need the current nodes value which is head of value we will also need the next nodes value so head of next of value if you observe here you are using head of next and you have already ensured that head of next is not equal to null the moment we know that current node is a critical node two conditions either it is the first critical node or it is not the first critical node if it is the first critical node that is if p1 is equal to minus 1 we will simply update p1 to the current position if it is not the first critical node that is if p1 is not minus 1 then we can find the difference of current critical node and the previous node which is nothing but position minus previous position and what will you do with this we will use it to update the minimum distance so we will write minimum distance equal to min of whatever minimum distance we had so far versus the current difference see we have not declared the min distance variable we will do it at the end sometimes it will happen that while writing the code you will figure out that you need few more variables let us continue doing that we will declare all the variables at the end let us continue with the code so once you have updated min distance but you know it is a critical point other things that you should update is you should always update p2 to the current position and to find minimum distance you always need the previous critical nodes position so before moving forward we should also update previous position to current position and no matter if the current node is a critical node or not every time we should increment position every time we should update previous value with head value and every time we should move head forward so head equal to head of next now let us see what all did we miss in this we missed declaring minimum distance so let us declare that minimum distance equal to we should initialize with something such that this statement continues to work as expected if you look at the constraints the constraint says that the number of nodes are in the range of 2 to 10 power 5 
So the answer cannot be more than 10 power 5. So let us initialize this to 10 power 5. We can also write 10 power 5 as 1 e 5. Once you have found p1, p2 and the minimum distance, let's try to return the answer. The problem expects us to return a vector of size 2. So let's declare an answer vector of size 2 initialized to minus 1s. The problem says that if there are fewer than two critical points, you should return minus 1, minus 1 is the output. As discussed, if p1 remains minus 1s, that means you did not find any critical point or if p1 and p2 are same, even that means that you found only one critical point. In that case, you can return the same answer. Otherwise, you found at least two critical points. So you will update answer of 0 with minimum distance. Answer of 1 will be maximum distance, which will be nothing but p2 minus p1. And at the end, we can simply return the answer. Let's try to run and see if the code is working. So if you see, we wrote a helper function is critical, but we did not implement that. So let's try to implement it. It's always recommended to complete the entire main logic first and then implement the helper function. If we stop here in between and write the helper function, chances are there that will end up making a mistake over here. So always implement helper functions at the end. So boolean is critical. It's accepting three values int x, int y, int z in the order of previous node value, current node value and next node value. A node is local maxima if it's strictly greater than the adjacent nodes. So y should be greater than x and y should be greater than z. That is the condition for local maxima. Similarly, for local minima, it should be strictly smaller than the two adjacent nodes. So y should be less than x and y should be less than z. So we can simply return this. If the point is either a local maxima or the point is a local minima, the function should return true. Let us try to run and check. So if you see, the code is working fine for the sample test cases. Let us try to submit and check. So when we submit the code, we see that it is working fine for all the sample test cases as well as all the hidden test cases. So from this problem, I hope you understand that a simple logic will have multiple conditions and there are high chances to miss one or two of the conditions if you do not figure out the logic in depth before writing the code. If you figure out the logic covering all the details, all the critical conditions before writing the code, we will be able to write the code in a single shot without any logical errors. Of course, you may have some compilation errors at times, but those are easier to resolve. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more such content.